Hi guys, Tuggy here with a new video and this video will be a updated Soul Shuffle tier list video for 10.2 of Dragonflight and what you're seeing on your screen right now is my previous tier list from uh, 10 days ago pretty much and I'll try to work from here towards my new tier list and it will be a shorter video, I will try to make it a weekly thing but I always will explain why I put X class or Y class into specific tier and if you want to debate with me in the comment section below, I try to respond to every single comment. Sometimes I cannot, depending on what is stated. But again, if you try to be constructive, I'll be always responding with something constructive of mine as well. Or reacting uh, or agreeing with you or disagreeing with you. Um, but let's start right away. Again, wh why is the reason why I want to do a weekly thing? I feel like Soul Shuffle... Uh, there is a lot of moving parts and depending on what spec you're playing, and I do play a lot of specs, uh, your perspective on a few specs uh, uh, changes. And, I, I'm, and especially with Forset now, that is now a common thing. Everyone has Forset pretty much. And um, I feel like now I can have like another uh, go at my tier list. Now let's start right away. So I'm going to go from bottom to top. And I'll work uh, towards that, um, depending on if there are a new placements or not. So, Augmentation Evoker, I feel like I'm confident by saying that it is uh, the worst ranged spec right now. It doesn't have burst. It is not really uh, well received as well. I feel like if I, I see a Augmentation Evoker, I'm actually kind of sad if I'm a healer. And if I'm a DPS, I'm actually kind of happy because I can, I, I can go 4-2 or best case is 5-1, depending on... Uh, if they uh, manage to, if I manage to win with the augmentation evoker once, um, but it, it feels way better whenever I'm playing DPS because I know that I have a fair shot at getting MMR. But as a healer, it, it is really terrible. Sometimes I'm hoping that the augmentation evoker just goes with zero wins or at least one win with me, so I can have a four two, for example. But I really don't like augmentation evoker. I, I think right now it, it is a, a spec that doesn't work in PvP. Uh, they, they nerfed this support aspect, which is a good thing. But they didn't really buff the DPS aspect of the of the, the the spec, so may as well make it a healer. To be honest, I see augmentation evoker as a protection paladin pretty much. But they don't they they, they have a bit more damage and a bit less survivability. You, you could literally put augmentation evoker versus a protection paladin, and it would like be fair, I think, fighting wise. But again, I don't know what they can do with it. I feel like they need a whole rework also for PVE. But uh, I think. We'll have to see for next expansion what they're going to do with it. Uh, Frost Decay. Um, I feel like it's still probably one of the worst medias. It's very hard to... Want, because I, sometimes I want to put it at C tier because I do feel there is potential. But you, the Frost Decay has to play perfectly and the healer doesn't needs to know nothing about Frost Decay. Because if the healer knows, he's just going to pop a CD while you are popping a CD. And if you have allies that know what's going to happen, he's going to disarm you. You're going to trick in the disarm because you want to have you go. You want He's going to stun you. You're going to Iceborne Fortitude because you want to stay, still go for your go. And you're going to get an AMS on you because you don't want to get CC while you're going to do a go. And then you get a fear and you're going to Lichborn and basically you have nothing else. And you're pretty much going to try to run away for 30 seconds, make another go, and then another 30 seconds to make a pillar go again. It's not ideal. It's a subtlety rogue, but it feels like, again, the damage is on par, but the survivability is not there. He doesn't have double vanish, he doesn't have cloak, he doesn't have evasion. He doesn't have, like, the many things that makes a subtlety rogue very strong. Like, a, for example, shadowy duel. Frost Decay, if they had a shadowy duel, like a frost duel, for example... The healer would be obliterated one like 1v1 or even the DPS. Uh, but they don't have that, so it's easily stopped. While a sub rogue, imagine they don't have a shadowy duel or imagine they don't have a smoke bomb, it's way more manageable than otherwise, right? So for me, it's on the same realm. They don't have like the, the same tools and they don't have the same survivability. They have the same kind of damage. But yeah. It's just not enough. I want to put them at C tier, but I feel like, look, it's the worst melee, so I have to put somewhere, someone at D tier, because it, it's a tier list. You have to have like a sort of pyramid, and that the middle, the middle point is one where you have the most specs, because that's how it works with tier list normally. You don't want to have like a very top heavy uh, tier list where you have everything at A, S, and S plus. 
but it doesn't really make sense because if everyone is S, no one is S, pretty much, right? But anyways, that's my that's my take. Enhancement Shaman. Um, look, I think it's better than uh, before because we, again, I, I've updated my guide. Uh, I have a new build, which is the Lava Lash build, and um, it does a lot of damage. Frost Shock does a lot of damage. Uh, Lava Lash does a lot of damage. Ice Strike does a lot of damage. Um, Elemental Blast, Lightning Bolts, everything does a lot of damage. The problem is survivability and the placebo buff of a 2% magical reduction, like damage reduction, is just not going to be enough because, again, there is so much damage, people are over killing you. It's not like you're surviving with a sliver of health. No, you, you, you're getting overkilled by 100k or 200k and that 2% is not going to matter too much. But overall, I feel like there is a bit of potential. I do feel like I'm going to put them a bit higher on the tier list. I'm not going to say that they're bottom to C tier. I think it's going to be a much higher. I think it's C tier, like top of C tier. Still underwhelming. C tier is, mean, means underwhelming, by the way. It's underwhelming because you, you can just get like targeted and you cannot do anything and you can get dispelled on flame shocks. And yeah, you can you, you can reapply flame shocks, but it, it, it's always going to reduce the damage that you're going to produce if they know how to play against. Uh, and you still really have to spend a lot of Maelstrom to get damage instead of like using it for defensives. It's really hard to do so. You have some lobbies where you're going to do good, but I think C tier is a fair, fair thing. Uh, Preservation Evoker, I think it's actually worse than Holy Priest right now. So I'm going to put them at C tier. I'm not going to put them at D tier because I, I think for healers to be D tier, you really have to be unplayable. I don't think it's unplayable. I think it's underwhelming though. And you have some matchups where you can do good. For example, if you have a Fire Breath with a lot of these spells, you can cheese out some Resto Druids. And your Sleepwalk is actually very strong if you're actually be able to use your Sleepwalk. Um, and the anti-CC thing is also quite nice. But again, it's a mana, the, the, the availability to actually switch on an Evoker. Uh, I do feel like your like, throughput is just not there, uh, especially in Soul Shuffle. Uh, so I feel like, for me, C tier is a deserved rank. Holy Priest, actually I'm a bit surprised. I think it's better than what it was uh, with all the buffs, like healing buffs and such. You actually have some throughput. I think the problem is you don't have enough CDs for this current meta. With Disc Priest, Resto Druids being rampant, it's very difficult. So for me, I'm, go I'm going to let it at C tier, but I have my eye on it. It could be on B tier uh, really soon. If they get like another buff somewhere, somewhere or somehow, they could actually jump to B tier. I think if they get a mana buff, it will become way better than a lot of specs, uh, especially in twos or in threes. In twos, for example, they are very good because they have CC, they have some damage, they have also some good throughput healing, but they get like oom very quickly. But imagine if you had like a good mana, I think twos, Holy Priest would be overtaking Disc Priest, for example. But in Soul Shuffle, it's a bit weird because again, dampening and such. But I think right now, Holy Priest, uh, C tier, I think it's a fair spot. Uh, Shadow Priest, I'm going to keep it at C tier right now. I feel like the buff is not enough. And you, you can make it work because of CC, but it's really too dependent on the lobby being smart. If your lobby is not smart, if your healer doesn't know how to heal Shadow Priest, if your DPS don't know how to um, take advantage of your CC, it feels really horrible to play. So I'm going to put that C tier. I know that some people make um, can make it feel like S tier or A tier because they have good allies. But in Soul Shuffle, you cannot count on good allies every single time. You're not. I'm not in, in my mind thinking about glad players whenever I'm making tier list because they don't need a tier list. The people that need a tier list are the people that are actually um, between, I would say, 1.6. I, I would even say 1.5 right now with deflation. Till I would say 2.2, 2.3, because they, they, they the the meta kind of dictates sometimes the lobby. Whenever you're higher, of course you're playing versus specialists. It doesn't really matter who you're playing against. But in um, in in those lobbies, again, whenever people are not really like I would say too too bright to actually uh, take advantage of your CC, it feels horrible to play. Far mage, I think it's it here. It it does a lot of damage, but it's way too squishy. Uh, Fury Warrior. Um, so I've been playing Fury Warrior. It's it's it has good damage. It has only that though. I think dampening really ruins your defensives. You don't have Die by the Sword. If you had Die by the Sword as a Fury Warrior, I think it would be on par. But even though you would technically be a good uh, spec versus casters, 
unfortunately with dampening you don't get to self heal yourself enough so if you get an ms effect on you plus the dampening your healing which is your defensive pretty much is nullified which again in soul shuffle whenever your defensive is very low you're just like not really reliable to gain wins you can sometimes gain wins because of a wimp or because of a good switch you can actually just delete someone but it's, uh, I mean, you, you cannot really count on it every single game. Sometimes you have to play like a victim pretty much. And if you're not able to do so because you don't have the defensives, it's very hard to get a win or still a win. Um, Risto Shaman, I'm sorry, man. Um, I want to put them at the same level as Holy Priest, to be honest. Because, let me explain. I think totems are a mechanic... That is just not suited for social shuffle because people don't know how to play with. And you have to put pings, you have to put macros to, to your earth wall, earthen wall to actually make people stay in it. You have to hide your tides even high, even better. And you know that some people are even um, outraging your tides. So you have to rearrange again your tides and, and they get destroyed immediately, especially at higher MMR. So it's very, very hard to actually exist. Your throughput, you're also a throughput healing, but a healer, by the way. If your throughput is low because of dampening, you have nothing. And at one point, whenever you don't have CDs, like for example, Link, or you have you don't have a social guidance, or you have like no a real uh, CD to use to have good healing, you're pretty much dead to just kick and ground totem. And if you're playing versus double midi, for example, they're going to switch on you. You're going to be dead like in an instant. Um, those are quite hard lobbies, so. Again, I'm going to put them at the lower end of B tier, which will jump Fury a bit higher, but uh, it's it's really close to C tier. I, I, I think they, they lack something in Soul Shuffle, I would say a damage reduction ability that is going to stick on the uh, ally um, to help them out um, like in any case. And I think Mastery, the Mastery is really cool because again, whenever they are very low, they get a lot more healing, but in Soul Shuffle, People that go low, they just die. Uh, you, you cannot really expect them to survive like whenever they have 10% HP. Especially when Windwalkers, Mistweavers are there, they can just touch, touch of death. So again, I think Restoration Shamans, difficult. Um, you can make it work though, depending on lobbies you can do some good lobbies, but you have to count on those lo good lobbies and to have Crowning Totem being like useful. So right now, B tier. Uh, I would say average tier. So you see go good and average, it's probably more average than good. Affliction Warlock, I think it's going to stay uh, where it is because I, I feel like it's too uh, lobby dependent. It's average to good, depending on the lobby you're facing. Feral Druid does a lot of damage, but again, we, we're circling back into the, uh, you have no defensives. The good thing is about Feral Druid is they have a lot of pressure and people don't kick your Cyclone, so you get like a lot of Feral Frenzy procs from your PvP talents. And since your four set also scales with your Feral Frenzy, it's all like a accumulation of a lot of damage that actually can make you win games. But if people know how to focus a Feral Druid and kick Cyclones, you don't have a lot of value. So right now I think it's good, but I don't think it's like B plus category. Okay, Survival. I think Survival will go a bit higher on the, tree, on the tier. I think it's... Uh, around here uh, the reason is that actually the four set come to think of it it actually adds a lot of bomb damage and it can surprise a lot of people but i still think like it's really dependent on the user user even more than anything and also you're depending on lobby as well um, also dependent on the healer knowing how to heal a survival hunter it's very squishy they they feel like very dependent on allies to actually uh, land a kill you cannot really solo carry, in my opinion, except if you're very good. But again, you don't you don't want to you don't want to make a tier list based on people that are very good because again, those are exceptional exceptional players. Uh, if your average Joe is playing Survival Hunter, your average like gamer that is just playing for relaxing, he's not going to overperform to the uh, case where they are going to jump three tiers, for example. But a pro player would make Survival Hunter like way better, of course. But I don't think uh, right now it deserves a higher than that. MM Hunter, although they get buffed, um, I feel like they're still B+. I think it's it's easy to stop. You have a lot of damage though, but 
<sighs> people know that you can just let them cast aim shot and you have to just stop rapid fire if you can uh, of course don't let them like cast aim shot every single time but rapid, rapid fire is like a safe sh like a safe route to dying i would say if you let them cast like a full one especially with the four set and they get a proc he can delete with a rapid fire while aim shot it's a bit slower depending on if you have true shot or not um and just in general I get more success by stunning or disarming whenever he tries to do a, a rapid fire than whenever he does a aim shot. Of course, sniper shot, you have to stop it because it does a lot of damage. But uh, I think right now, although they get a lot of buffs, I don't think they are like in a great, great spot. They're in a good spot. Like it's above average. Like it's above good. It's B+. Plus. It's really on the verge of being A tier, on the verge of being B tier. But... They, they are not bad, so again, I'm going to keep it like this. Outlaw Rogue is going to jump uh, to A tier, in my opinion. Um, it's very strong. Um, the damage is actually very high if they know how to play. But I think the majority of people that I've faced, they know how to play because it's a very niche spec. So if they play Outlaw Rogue, often or not, they do know how to play it. But also... They have a lot of CC, a lot of survivability compared to other specs. For example, Survivor Hunter, you have to know how to play, but again, your survivability is still there that is going to keep you down. While well, Auto Rogue, they, they have CC for days. They can literally be annoying to play as a caster. If you're casting, he's going to kick you. If he's not going to kick you, he's going to stun you. If he's not going to stun you, he's going to e camp you. Uh, he, he can blind you even to gain time. Again, they can restuff or they can shadow dance into a cheap shot again. They have ways to make you not play the game. And they can do that for the healer. And so shuffle, the healer being CC'd is like a death sentence for a DPS that has no, CD, no CDs to use. So I think A tier is fair. I think like middle middle of A tier pretty much. Uh, depending um, of the, the rest of the, the tier list. Um, Holy Paladin. I'm going to keep it at B+. Plus. I think they get even nerfed, so... Like, mana-wise, so I'm going to put them a bit lower. But it's really, like, meta-dependent. If you're playing versus all Arms Warrior, Wind Walkers, Fury Warriors, Feral Druids, your, like, Blessing of Protection has a lot of value. But if you're playing versus, like, a Frost Mage, Destruction, Warlock, goodbye, man. You don't have a lot of things to actually help you. You're also super kickable as well. So... Uh, overall, I think versus casters, which in my opinion is still a caster meta, um, it's very difficult to exist. Um, fist weaver or mist weaver? Uh, uh, let's talk about fist weaving, right? Uh, fist weaving, I think they can jump into A tier. Uh, it's actually strong. Um, they, they they still can perform very well. A good Fist Weaver is going to be a poison for the enemy team. And with the meta currently with Demology Walk and BM Hunters and such, and all DKs, you have a lot of pets to hit, so you can keep on healing. And you can also cleave them, so you have even more healing. So uh, for me, it's going to be A tier, but really on the verge of B+, instead of S, right? So they're very close to B+, but they're, they're higher than currently. And I feel like there is some separation needed between Holy Paladin and Mist Weavers. Which I'm going to call Fist Weavers because uh, often or not you're going to face Fist Weavers. Um, you have some mystery casted Mist Weavers, but I feel like they're easily stopped in Soul Shuffle. And um, it's very hard to talk about a worst build, I would say, um, for a spec. Because I'm not going to talk about uh, a kill command spec for Survival Hunter because it's not going to be a kill command spec. It's going to be the normal spec, the good one. So uh, let's talk about the good ones whenever I'm talking about a class going into a tier. Uh, Windwalker, actually all the buffs and all the, the, the things going on, it's sleeper OP, but I'm not going to say it's S+. plus. I'm not going to say it's S, but I do definitely think it's really top of A tier. Let me explain. Uh, they have a lot of damage. The 4 set, I would say the 2 set, but the 4 set also reduces the CDs. But the 2 set brings you like insane amount of damage of Blackout Kick, and Blackout Kick gets even more buffed. Now you have Dance of Chigi getting buffed. That's interesting. I don't know if people are going to switch towards Dance of Chigi. I don't know what they need to give up for that. But it feels like they are going to get even more damage outside of their CDs. And even if they have CDs, it's going to be even higher because of all the multiplicatives uh, that you have on your uh, talent trees. Also, I think 
you have very good defensives. And again, I'm a bit disingenuous because I always say I don't judge people for like playing way better than what they're supposed to be. But Windwalkers, if you know how to play just a, a tad bit, you don't play like a warrior. You still try to avoid damage by TPing and TPing back. If you're like face tanking everything, or if you don't try to line a chaos ball, if you don't have a kick, you're playing it wrong. Because you can literally TP out, he's going to stop his cast, you can go back and you have time to actually stop the chaos bolt, which is going to occur anyways, for example. And I'm talking about destruction walk, but I could be talking about everything on the tier list, right? If you actually can kite a bit, it gives you a lot of survivability with also a touch of karma, and then you have dampen, and dampen and harm, and then you have also this, um, dispel magic. I don't know how it's called, I think. Uh, diffuse magic, excuse me. So you have a lot of things that are there that is going to help you, but you have to press CDs. You have to use your TPs. If you're playing without a TP, you're playing something... Like, it's like a Warlock without TP or a Warlock without Portal. It's, it's you're, you're not playing the spec, right? So you have to play the spec and you're going to have a lot of performance, uh, uh, I would say, um, improvements. Um, Retribution Paladin and Arms Warrior are going to, in, are going to stay on this tier. I feel confident that they are not going to be better right now, um, except if a meta changes or if they get a buff, but I don't think they're going to get a buff significant enough. Also, overall, they will get a lot of a lot less damage because of the uh, trinket changes that are going to nerf the primary stat. So overall, you're going to be a big loser in this, in this uh, patch, and it will be until January probably because... They are going to do a holy holiday stop, so they're not going to balance anymore until January probably. So uh, I expect them to stay there. Uh, at least that's how I feel right now with the t with the meta. Um, Frost Mage, I think I'm going to let them at eight here. I think it's very strong, but I think it's stoppable, and it depends on who you're facing as well. Uh, Devastation Evoker, ooh, that's going to be a surprise, guys. That's going to be a surprise. I think it's S tier. I think Devastation Evoker is scary as hell, man. People don't know. People don't know until they know. People don't know until they know that they're going to get destroyed. And I mean, yes, you have lobbies where you're going to feel a bit powerless, but I feel like it's teammate dependent, but also not. Again, if a lobby is there and the healers don't know how to heal, you're going to have a great time because you're disintegrate with the procs of. Uh, Eternity Surges, I think, or, uh, yeah, Eternity Surges are going to, like, give a lot of, like, damage for free. Uh, Fire Breath is there still, but it's not, like, the all or nothing ability that it was before. Uh, now, if you can actually spam Disintegrate, just do it. It does a lot of damage. It actually makes me want to play Devastation, although the, the race, I don't like the race, unfortunately, because it, it feels, like, a bit, like, whimsy. But, um... I wish, I wish uh, it was a bit different, but it, it does look fun to play. Um, it's still a bit like of a broken spec in the regards of it's all or nothing. It's either like top of the tier list or bottom of the tier list. But um, right now, I think it's a lot less cheesy than it was before. Assassination Rogue, I'm going to let them at 8 here. Um, although, a bit higher. I think Assassination Rogue right now, they have a lot of damage, they can carry games, but you're still very squishy. To be honest, I'm going to keep them there. They're, you're very squishy, you're still... If they know if they, if they, if they know you're playing versus Assassination Rogue, and you know us also as well as, as a, a team, just go on the Assassination Rogue most of the time, he's going to drop, and he's going to play defensively, and if he plays de defensively while he's bursting, it means that he's not going to do any damage. And it's still very CD heavy, uh, King's Bane is still there, I would say, the mastery, the full mastery build is still there, uh, so it means it's pretty much like an all or nothing kind of thing, you're not going to like burst every single time. Um, it has a lot of damage, huh? I'm not going to say that, but I'm, I'm saying that really it's an easy spec to actually counter uh, once you know uh, you're facing one. Uh, Elemental Shaman, they got nerf on the region of Maelstrom, they got a nerf on the uh, CD um, reduction on Prime on prim um, Primordial Wave. Um, but I do feel like they're still very, very strong because of the meta. Um, I'm not going to drop them. Um, maybe there, maybe like this. 
Yeah, maybe like this because I, I do feel like the Maelstrom nerfs are enough to make you have to cast sometimes or have to wait out to get Maelstrom. Um, it depends on who you're facing as well. If a healer knows, he's going to like dispel a lot of flame shocks. And although it got buffed, like the backlash from uh, flame shock, it's still not enough to actually not make you dispel. So right now it's going to be a uh, A tier spec. Arcane, I low-key think it's the best uh, mage spec. Um, it's really strong. Um, if you know how to play and how to kite, again, I'm a bit disingenuous because it's, uh, I try to uh, rate people uh, not on their perform. I'm going to keep them there. Because, again, I can say, look, they are... They are... Um, how can I say that? They are very strong because they're good players and... Then you have like bad, bad arcane mages that are like soaking a lot of damage without without trying to um, do altered times and whatever. And they're going to get destroyed. But uh, that's why I, I have to keep them at A tier because I have to think about the broadened uh, player base. And I do feel like there is a lot of difference between a very good arcane mage and a very bad one. So uh, I need to, to be careful with their tier uh, placements. But this is pretty much the A tier in my opinion. Um... Yeah, I'm going to keep it like this, I think. Yeah, I'm going to keep it like this. Um, we have then Resto Druid. I think Resto Druid is definitely an S+, plus, very strong. Um, and to be honest, I think this, this, this Priest as well. To, uh, together, I think the two healers are like the only two healers that you're going to face in social for most of the time. Um, unfortunately, we have a lot of S pluses because it just feels that it is a very... Um, meta centric, um, uh, meta centric uh, soul shuffle uh, game mode, I would say, where you have a lot of uh, people um, overperforming, and then you have some specs that are a bit less performing. Uh, you could say that S plus and S is a bit the same, really, but I have to make some separation. I think uh, it is fair, though, that you have. Do, do, do I put this priest and Resto Druid on the same tier though? Do, do I feel like they're like on the same level? Because whenever I'm playing Resto Druid, I'm playing versus a Disc Priest. And whenever I'm playing Disc Priest, I feel like I'm always playing versus a Resto Druid. So I feel like there are only like two healers that I'm facing all the time. And then you have like the occasional Feast Weavers, Holy Paladin and Resto Druid. And then you have those two that are really rare to play versus. And um, popularity is not always everything, but... It feels like right now the two heals that are really on top of everything are those two. Um, I do feel like they're like very high on the tree, but it's very hard because it's a healer, right? But I'm, I'm going to keep it like this. Maybe, maybe top of S tier then instead, because then it, it, it kind of makes sense. And then I put BM Hunter on S plus and really high. I think DH and DK are still very strong, but um, I feel like with all the nerfs and just in general the throughput with Force and such, I feel like those three specs, like Balance Root, Demonology Walk, and BM Hunter, they are very unstoppable. I feel like damage is like not predictable. As a healer, it's actually difficult to heal versus a Balance Root, also difficult versus Demonology Warlock. Because again, the damage is like so surprising. Sometimes he's not popping CDs and he's destroying people. Uh, and BM Hunter, I mean, you're bursting every 30 seconds pretty much. Call of the Wild gives you another burst as well. So I do feel like they are very, very strong. And I do believe it's S+. Plus. Um, it's it's really, really strong. You don't really need to tra trap as well. If you want to trap, you can do that. But with the damage that you're doing... You don't you don't even need to trap, but you, you can you can trap again if you have the time to do so. You have to do so, but uh, scatter sh shot your the off DPS. Try to go on the main DPS. Try to root them off. Try to kite as much as you can. Try to free them whenever you can on your ally on yourself. Um, try to be aware of your healers uh, positioning and also if they are rooted or CC'd. Try to mending pet to actually um, dispel a lot of stuff. But I feel like. Uh, this tier list kind of shows what's up with the um, meta, right? I feel like the meta is very cost heavy. You have some anti casts which are DH and DK, but even them do like them too are like 
kind of dropping because of like the trends that we have right now with classes being way better right now. Uh, you see also on Drustva, the amount of uh, classes are catching up with the melees, which often not is not going to happen in a melee-centric meta, by the way. If it's a melee-centric meta, classes are never going to uh, reach towards the popularity of a, a melee. But if it's a caster meta, it can reach towards the melee one. And that's why, and that's what's happening right now. So, for me, this is the tier list. Um, I updated a, a, a lot of placements. I do feel like... Again, those fives, they, they could be interchangeable, like I said, um, depends on perspective. Uh, and those five as well, depending on perspective, you could like make them higher or lower. The same, like those two healers are like, as if there if there was a separate healer um, tealers without uh, accounting of the DPS, it could be S+. plus. But I'm trying to account them together, so I'm trying to, to see, look... Those two melees, they are just, I think, in my opinion, a bit worse than the three uh, classes here. Uh, Destruction Warlock is a bit better than Sublity Rogue, which is a bit better than the Devastation Evoker. But I do feel like those two healers are better than those three, for example. But it's very small margin margins. It's still S tier, but it's very, very small where they're placed towards each other. And um, that's the explanation I try to give. Again, thank you for watching this video. I really appreciate you. Hopefully, you understand the tier list. Hopefully, you're agreeing with me. If you don't, that's not a problem. We're here to debate and to actually share ideas. So if you want to share your ideas, your commentary, your uh, feeling about the meta, please do. Um, I know a lot of specs still have issues and they need a rework or they need a buff. But uh, be sure to uh, check it out and let me know what you think about this tier list.